Hello everybody, I am Furblind Gamer, and you're watching my Twitch channel, and I appreciate you're watching my Twitch channel. Uh, sorry I didn't stream yesterday, I had a bunch of work to do and then <laughs> ended up, uh, it was really late and I was exhausted, and I figured I would stream today to make up for it. <laughs> um, we're done. Uh, since I did a, I'd been doing an adventure game, I thought I would, I hadn't done any short, uh, really retro arcade games in a couple weeks, so I thought I would go back and do one of those. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to start a long game tonight, because, well, for one thing, it's already late, somehow. I'll probably make this a shortish stream, and then... I know we're already in the middle of a, another longer game, and I've got more stuff coming up this weekend. Um, and I did say I was going to try and play Hellcab this week, and I've actually gotten stuff set up so that I can play Windows 3.1 games reasonably effectively on Windows 10, which is cool. But uh, and then I... Yeah, run into more problems I'm still trying to figure out, but there are plenty of old obscure games I'll get to eventually. And, oh yeah, and I uh, got a Twitch bot and uh, set up the shoutout command so it should finally be working now. I always wondered why I didn't say, uh, you know, list the streamer's information when I typed exclamation mark SO. Turns out it's because you're supposed to type exclamation mark shout out. My mistake. Uh, and that's set up, and tonight I thought we would play an old DOS game, which I played the shareware version of a while ago, and I yeah, haven't played in quite a while. It's uh, not, I wouldn't say it's a great game, but it's kind of interesting. It's got some elements of platformer and top-down, and it's a the Wild West action game Billy the Kid Returns, available from Alive Software. And yes, I do own a complete in-box copy of this game, so that's why I'm playing the full version. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. This game has good music. I mean, not. I'd say it's a arrangements of pop, popular, uh, traditional pop standards, you know, slash folk music. So you'll probably recognize some of the tunes. I think they're terribly catchy, but then I I like I like that kind of music. Hmm. I also feel an affinity for this game because. Uh, sometimes people um, have said that my father looks like Billy the Kid. Also that he looks like David Carradine and Warren Oates, and sounds like Ken Burns. People are weird. <laughs> but one time my little sister saw that I had a copy of Billy the Kid Returns, and she said, Hey, it's a game about Dad. <laughs> Dad didn't uh, think a great deal of that. Mm. So this is a DOS game from 94, and basically you're playing as the famous outlaw Billy the Kid through major events in his life, um, or interpretations thereof. And it's broken down into ten episodes. They're basically each one big level, and there were three in the shareware version. This is the full version. The first thing you have to do is escape from prison. Well, see if I actually am really very good at playing this game. <laughs> Sometimes the controls can be difficult. Uh, 
Oh yeah, I think it explains the plot, such as it is in the help file. But it basically boils down to is you have to get 10 keys in each episode or in each level um, to get out of prison or to unlock the door to a mine or to chase the ghosts away. It, 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 it gets weird, whatever. 10 keys. Yeah, you'll notice the collision detection is a little finicky. <laughs> Hello, puppy. We're, uh, not going to mess with you. Or, we could shoot the dog. Ha! Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not too violent. You'll notice whenever you, uh, shoot anybody, they just kind of give up and are like, oh, all right, that's enough gunplay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Apparently, if you press shift, you shoot two bullets at once. That could be useful, I'll have to remember that. Sometimes it's better to run away. <laughs> oh, he followed me. <laughs> but yeah, see what I mean about it? like you can move up and down on this space <laughs> as that were top down or like. Symmetric, but semi top down. But then it's also kind of like a platformer in some parts. It's interesting. And some levels are purely top down, but you can still jump. Yeah, they'll try to avoid you <laughs> or your shots. <laughs> So notable is that even though Shoot a Pangela. Hi, this looks fun. I only woke up hey. for a second, gotta go back to sleep now, lol. But have a good time. Thanks, Angela. I really appreciate you coming in and stop and saying hi, and I I know it's late for you and I hope you have a good night. And I have no idea why speech chat suddenly sounds like a woman. I must have changed some setting when I was messing around with it. But thank you, Angela, and have a good night. <laughs> Even though you don't actually kill any, but well, you, I mean, you can kill uh, bulls and snakes and spiders and like evil mice. You can't kill any humans or dogs. But even so, the developer still worried it might be slightly too violent, so he put in an option to play it with no guns. If you, you know, you like the old west, but you don't like guns, which I think then just becomes. I think I tried it once and it just becomes you avoid the bombs and snakes and the enemies still spawn but you know they can't shoot you and you can't shoot them. Oh and I'm out of ammo which is not a good thing. Ah, and I have more ammo. seems quite reasonable thus far, but I, I remember it getting... Oh. A, a bit harder. <laughs> For example, sometimes the enemies respawn, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you get stuck in the floor. It's all sometimes 
They stay dead after you lose life, and sometimes they don't. It's wildly inconsistent. Sometimes when you lose a life, you warp back to the start of the level. At least you keep your keys. Oh, wait. <laughs> Sometimes the bad guys vanish. Sometimes they sure as heck don't. me to stay in this prison, don't you? I'm only like 16 years old. Jeez. Oh yeah. You'll note there's a face in that barrel. Sometimes the bad guys or the, the, good, the good guys? Bad, bad. The antagonists from Billy the Cube's perspective. Sometimes they hide in barrels and bushes and crates, but fortunately you can see their faces imprinted in the barrel. and being like, well, I should try and grab every item ever. Nah, I'm gonna try to fight that urge. <laughs> Except, of course, for the big items that give you extra health. Eh, extra health slash extra life. They call it health, but it feels more like losing a life. Sort of keep your head down. <laughs> See, I warped all the way back here. It's <laughs> not, you know, not perfect coding. <laughs> this game ain't exactly Commander Keen. But to be fair, I think only like eight games in the history of video games actually have been commander keen. So the odds were against it. I considered actually playing commander keen episode one tonight. And then I was like, eh, give them something more obscure. People like obscure things. Dude, maybe this was just an original composed for the game. Like, 
a bit more artificial intelligence than your average game. Makes it a bit more challenging. I missed a key, but you only need 10 keys, as you'll see along the bottom, to be able to exit the level. back at all. <laughs> oh god, somebody left the prison window open. Gravely, it's almost like after you escape from each uh, level, they have to call in the cavalry. <laughs> Alone in the desert. Oh good, alone. That means there won't be a bunch of men with guns trying to shoot me, because then I wouldn't be alone. Uh -huh. That's turkey in the straw. In the shareware version, this level had a different tune. Which... I wasn't... Sh I was never sure what it was. I feel like it probably was some like old time song it like kind of reminded me of a different version of Polly Wally Doodle but I don't think it was but, but yeah turkey in the straw we all know that sometimes called the most American of all songs according to a book of folk music from the 50s complete with our racist background it, most American shoot backwards. Well. I mean, I did shoot first, but I, I knew he was evil. Or, you know, my enemy. One of the two. Who's really the good guy and who's really the bad guy? Because I don't know enough about the history of Billy the Kid to answer that question. I think actually I remember reading that... Was it Turkey in the Straw was one of his favorite tunes in real life? It might have been. It was one of those pop standards. Slash folk music. I'm probably not using the terms quite right. How's it going, dude? Actually, everybody should go check out Guitar Cat. That's right. Thanks to you, Guitar Cat, I figured out how to install a Twitch bot that gives shoutouts. <laughs> but how's your day going, dude? sticking out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it does sound like a good day. 
Hopefully that'll be a lot of fun to play, or to watch on stream when you do that. Billy the Kid Returns. And I just failed to jump into the over the aqueduct. <laughs> All the good deserts have aqueducts. Uh, what setting were you uh, working on for your games, Kitar? Or can, can you give details? <laughs> those dynamites look like sausages. There's actual blood when you kill the snakes. <laughs> Violence. No wonder they had a no gun option. There was a man in that barrel. serve ammo, but sometimes you just can't be stingy with it. Guitar Cat. I made a setting for Adventure Skeletons. It's a more combat-focused system than the ones I've been running, and you play skeletons seeking adventure in the human dunge town. <laughs> oh nice, instead of humans fighting skeletons, it's skeletons fighting humans. <laughs> or adventuring. <laughs> oh, man, that, that sounds cool. Have you played using that system before? Unfortunately, we'll restart that episode slash level. Facts. I do not recall like, a famous figure from the Wild West named Fax. Well, perhaps he was the one who invented the fax machine. What do I know? <laughs> mm-hmm. If someone attacks you, they hit. You're slow. I'm not sure if you're talking about the system you're running or you're talking about this game, because sometimes this game feels like it. Guitar Cat. He makes sure he backs off. <laughs> as long as he gets his facts straight. <laughs> Thank you. 
The wagon just ran over that bull. <laughs> At least they're not very discerning in who they kill. Yeah, they say that Billy the Kid's the villain, but... I don't know what I was stuck against. But they're these, like, wild marad marauders with their Conestoga wagons just... Plowing through the desert, running over anything living that they see, or shooting at any human they see. Maybe they're the real villains. Yes. Unlock the door to the mine. Hmm. Yeah, the bad guys can pick up uh, items too. Normally isn't that big a deal, but if they pick up, you know, an extra life or like some bullets, then I get a little angry. Guitar cat. That's rude of them. I know that they shouldn't have that functionality. It's you know some of these like get in the, the more obscure games. Which, I think this was just developed by one guy. They don't have the same polish, and yeah. Sometimes the controls aren't as great, or the programming. But sometimes they'll have features like that that you don't see in most games, like. It's not that common that the bad guys, I mean, especially in games from the early 90s, the bad guys could pick up and you know, either, like, basically steal the items. <laughs> Definitely more than ten. over a fire, or whatever that is.
Note to self, stampeding bulls can climb over rocks that are about, I don't know, five feet high? Well, sometimes. Two down and eight to go. The next part of their plot is after wandering through the desert, um, after escaping from prison, Billy the Kid finds a mine belonging to an old man and his, ste his steampunk army of trained mice. And Billy decides to take all the gold bars lying around. Guitar cat. And the old man doesn't like it. This music is so bad. You think so? I mean, granted, it is kind of, you know, very basic midis, but I like the arrangements of these songs. Or maybe, I mean, maybe it's more that I like the songs themselves, so I like the music. That's why I said, did I swear it gets stuck in your head? <laughs> the synth just sounded bad. And interestingly, I remember this tune sounding differently. Either I had like an earlier Shara version of the game, or guitar cat. A bad sure. instrument makes everything feel worse. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a little less like PC speakery right now. I wonder if this is Sound Blaster or Ad Lib. Oh yeah. You can pick up a lantern and then things won't appear in chat, like silhouette form, but I think it's easier to play like that starker contrast. <laughs> oh yeah. That's one of the like uh, armored battle wagons powered by steam and mice that the old man employs to keep people out of his mine. Like, kinda, it's got a spin-off about the mysterious old man. <laughs> You get stuck in things like the floor, which is not good when you're supposed to maneuver quickly. Guitar cat. Armored battle wagon is a phrase. I... Yeah. Steam powered mice driven armored battle wagons. <laughs> yeah. eh, you know, these old games, you, you don't always have to have a whole lot of logic. Like, there's something trying to kill you. You try to stop it from killing you. <laughs> and those, the size of those shurikens, apparently the old man also has an army of 20 foot tall ninjas. I... <laughs> I should just try jumping over it. I think those things take four hits to kill. Actually, a really interesting thing about 
Well, this song yeah. specifically. I'd prefer a 20 foot tall Konoichi. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't we all? Hmm. I mean, maybe. You know, the new uh, Resident Evil game has a giant vampire lady who apparently Capcom or has announced canonically she's is it nine and a half feet tall, so you know, maybe yeah, you know, seeing how good the well the game does, maybe we will get twenty foot tall female ninjas eventually. Resident Evil does a yeah, zombie ninja spin off. I feel like it's not outside the realm of possibilities. Sooner or later, all these series are going to go off the rails if they haven't already. Guitar Cat. Oh yeah, Lady Dimitrescu. Nine feet tall with heels and hat. Winky face. Yeah. I know the internet's been quite a buzz with her the last few uh, few days. And I'm like, this is an evil eight. Don't they have like 20 of those games now? Like, why are they continuing the main numbering system if they start remaking the old ones. Everyone's just like, uh, just don't question it. It's got sexy ten foot tall vampires. I really need to play Resident Evil. It's... Hmm. One of the things I do intend to do when I... Eventually I'm going to get a capture card and then I'm going to hook that up to my roommate's PS2 and play my copy of Resident Evil 1 and find out what all the buzz is about. Guitar Cat. They're doing both with this game. Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village? Wait, what is, what is that? <laughs> Explicably, the bombs are not silhouettes. You can see the bombs clearly. Guitar cat. <laughs> Where the vill is colored to be Roman numeral eight. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> oh wow, I've got plenty of ammo. <laughs> Earth. The old man hasn't shown up yet. And that's kind of worrisome. Guitar Cat. But all the press material is all just Resident Evil Village. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, I hadn't actually read any of the press material, I just heard people talk about it, and yeah say Resident Evil 8, or just the new Resident Evil. There's the old man, as you can tell by the vague silhouette of a five foot long white beard. And he has a rifle and takes two hits. And fortunately, I... he can't shoot upwards. Unfortunately, I sometimes walk into snakes. I... You're not supposed to make someone spawn right in front of a, like, powerful bad guy with a gun. Eh, who am I to talk? I've never even made a game. I just play them. There. There. Now that's a flaming steam-powered mice-driven battle wagon. And the old man respond. We're not going to mess with him. It's okay. He'll warp to another part of the mine and find us again.
Oh yeah, but I don't know. I was starting to tell you guys like funny kind of story about th this game, but specifically this song. I first, I know I'd heard about this game, you know, and shareware compilations and stuff. But um, the first time I played it, the share oh, the shareware version was on one of those shovelware CDs, you know, like 100 great games for Windows. And I'm like, you and I have very different definitions of the word great, sir. And I think this this one was called, like, Flying Body Parts. It had a picture from that beat em up Executioners on the front and played itself up as, oh yeah, this is a bunch of really violent games. And then, uh, you know, four-fifths of them were the same epic mega games and Apogee slash ID software games that every shareware compilation had, because they're better than most what's out there. But Billy the Kid Returns was one of the games on there. And I, I heard this tune and really liked it. And I was pretty sure I'd heard it before, but I didn't know what it was called. Like, I asked around, and some people, you know, and I whistled it, some people said, yeah, that sounds familiar, like, I think I heard it in a Western movie or something, but I don't know. And then I asked uh, my friend Scott McMillan, and he said, he didn't know the name, but he would, he started singing it and remembered the lyrics, so I looked it up and found out it's Reuben and Rachel. And it's a popular song from the... 1880s, I want to say. But, um... I know it's been used in different things, like... It was on one of those Disney Silly Songs records, and in... One of the... We Sing, uh... Movies, whatever you call them. The kids run into... Like, are looking through a photograph album, and they're like, Oh, there's Reuben and Rachel, old ancestors. Perhaps they can give us a clue to this mystery. But the song got stuck, the tune got stuck in my head, and because I had found found uh, found it and this game on a shovelware CD-ROM, I was like, huh, now this makes me think of shovelware. And I started making up a song about shovelware, which eventually became the song Shovelware and Shovelware, which would have been maybe... 2009 or something I was writing it. It's like before I started writing a bunch of video game themed songs, but I don't know. It's still one of my favorite songs I've ever written. It was when I sung on Twitch Sings like the day that that shut down. <laughs> It's interesting the things that inspire us or get stuck in our head. <clears throat> and I do find like the whole idea of like shovelware and Guitar throwing cat. a bunch of. Do you have any of your songs published anywhere? Um, I don't really guitar. I. I was plan like planning at one point to try and release, uh, you know, form a band and try to, you know, release CDs of a bunch of uh, video game thing themed songs. Uh, even like partnered with a guy and worked with him for a bit before I realized uh, he wasn't quite as invested in the project as I was. <laughs> but I just, it's like, most of my songs are like parodies or um, just take old tunes and new lyrics. Like, you might call that filking. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with them. I've, I've sometimes thought of like, should I try and set up a band camp or a Patreon or I don't know, just something to get all my songs performed and out there.
That's awesome. Like, hey, what if I died unexpectedly and most of them haven't been performed? I feel like that was me. And man, I'm sorry. Oh shit! No, no, no! That was not you at all. That was this was a uh, backum. Uh, like early 2010s, I was thinking of or trying to work with uh, this local musician in Virginia to get him. Um, to try and uh, make it make CDs of video Guitar game theme songs. <laughs> oh, way before I knew you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, I feel like I never. I mean, I kind of dropped the ball on that songs of uh, our school project, which, and I did write a couple more, but I kind of got distracted trying to find jobs, and then. The pandemic hit, but that that's a project I want to get back to and to, you know, record demos for those and see if we can get the school to support us doing like 20 songs or two CDs worth, whatever. <laughs> uh, wish I could find a way to like get a job writing song lyrics. So much easier than screenplays or well, just about anything. <laughs> Guitar cat. Lots of stuff going down all the time, but it is a cool one I want to do. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> Me too. I mean, I hope. Because, you know, I did that for William and Mary, and it ended up being... Eh. Kind of half-assed and never getting officially published. Like, I would want to do it, you know, do it right for if we did, you know, that for our school. And I don't think I've asked you, Keith Arcad. Is there any, anything like any big projects you're, you're working on right now? I know school's taking up a bunch of your time. But I don't know if there are any projects like through school. Cat. My big project is my D&D weekly thing. Oh, cool. That's awesome that you're putting you know, so much effort into that. Guitar Cat. And... I'm trying to get a critical mass, so I don't have to run all of them. Mm. Like you could get other people to run them? And, th and those are some of the ones you're streaming, right? Guitar Cat. Yeah, it's my idea, but I'd love it to just be an active space for telling stories. That would be awesome. Guitar Cat. I've been screaming them, yes. Man, sometimes RPGs are so great for telling stories. <laughs> Although I know there's that, like, joke that takes on various forms about, you know, the game master plans things out and has an idea of, you know, how the story is going to go in this really complicated, in-depth story, and then the players find a way around it. Like in a, a webcomic Darths and Droids, where it's telling the entire Star Wars saga as though it were an RPG. It, like, the Jar Jar Binks character says, Oh yeah, our city's underwater. And then one of the others says, the Game Master just spent the entire week mapping out, out the planet's surface, didn't he?
Guitar cat. That would explain why the city looks so weird. <laughs> it would explain a lot of things. <laughs> that is a really creative webcomic. It's one of those ones I keep meaning to go back and read. And also, I've still never seen the second Star Wars movie. The, I mean, episode two. So I was kind of thinking, eh, I should actually watch that first. Even though it's supposed to be the worst one. I mean, other than the holiday special, but... in this game are pretty much pure platforming. And you still have these weird floors that you can move up and down on. song Reuben and Rachel. <laughs> Kamikaze mice clipping through the floors. <sighs> getting slower these controls are unresponsive sometimes <laughs> guitar cat I'm starting to think this game might be janky <laughs> yeah it, it's definitely janky it's one of those ones you can kind of get used to it, but I can. I think on the later levels it gets frustratingly hard. I thought I shot four bullets, but eh, maybe I just can't count. what it is. Some of these games really do have, you know, aren't great or have significant flaws, but I still enjoy them. You say that like this isn't hard. <laughs> oh no, this is hard. I mean, I'm just not, don't seem to be playing especially well today, but... <laughs> it's like, you know, difficult but not ridiculous. <laughs> I say as I fall into a shuriken. Guitar okay. cat. I know those days. I'll try this episode one more time. See if I can beat it and move on. I mean, I doubt I'll play the whole, I mean, the whole game tonight. That, I mean, the rate I'm going, that might take hours. <laughs> yeah, at least get through this and you know, have a go at some of the later levels. Here's some of the later tunes. Until you said that about the music, I hadn't thought so very much about you know, the music in DOS games. And so I know some are better than others, and this does sound better than your average PC speaker. But I'm 
I'm pretty sure this has to be, I mean, obviously generated by DOSBox, but it has to be a sound card. And then just thinking, you know, what they could do to make music sound better based on those tools. jumping, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and it's that same part of thing is for to register as a collision, like a certain part of your body has to hit it, like hmm. the same thing in Wolfenstein 3D actually, like you have to touch it more fully. That always seems to work for the power-ups that way, but not for the enemies and projectiles quite so much. <laughs> Speaking of Reuben and Rachel, like, you know there's the sandwich called, like, called the Reuben, but then there's also a kind of sandwich called the Rachel, which I'd never heard of until, actually until I went to grad school and uh, they served it at a, what's it called, grill works there. And I think what it is is, I think the name was inspired by the song, because like, the Rachel is the same thing as the Reuben, except that it's made with pastrami instead of corned beef. Hello, old man. Don't mind me. Just robbing your mind. Guitar cat. Damn it, now I want another corned beef sandwich. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, corned beef is one of my favorite things. It's like, how is this so good? All right, it probably has like a gram of salt per every piece. But other than that, it's also still really good. Also, maybe it's because of my Irish ancestry and corned beef and cabbage is a traditional Irish dish. I'm quite such a big fan of cabbage, though. Especially the uh, yellow kind. Like, I think the red kind tastes better. Especially pickled. Guitar cat. 100 cc's of saline. <laughs> so that's how you make corned beef. The scientific way. Yeah, back in the old days, they just had to, you know, estimate it throw it in the bed of salt but now you know we can make things precise thank you very much joy of cooking <laughs> for giving us the proper ratio of salt to beef somewhere. That was a snake that fell on me. <laughs> hmm. 
Reuben, Reuben, I've been thinking what a grand world this would be if the men were all transported far across the northern sea. Oh my goodness gracious, Rachel, what a strange world this would be if the men were all transported far across the northern sea. Tooralooralu, tooralooral, tooralooralu, toorally. If we had some more young ladies just across the northern sea. So I don't remember the lyrics. <laughs> and I think there have been different versions. And it's interesting, and this the intro portion of this tune is based on the original sheet music. <laughs> like has that same intro. But almost none of the recorded versions have it. I didn't even know it until like found somebody sh singing the actual sheet music on YouTube. It's so inconsistent. <laughs> and and I can't tell if that's... That's one of those things, is it on purpose? Like, did the programmer do this to make it extra challenging? Or is it kind of sloppy coding? Sometimes I don't know. Ah, well. Let's try it. Sombrero Jack and his gang. After robbing the old man and escaping from his um, malevolent steampunk mice, uh, Billy the Kid flees to Mexico, where he meets a band of uh, Mexican bandits who see that he's carrying approximately 2,000 pounds of silver and decide they're going to rob him. Billy has other plans. Meanwhile, the bulls clearly have it in for him. And for once, I'm not talking about the police. I... <laughs> I just feel like this is one of those games where you're supposed to advance very cautiously and then be able to make, you know, extremely quick movements. Oh, oh, you can change directions and shoot at me from any angle. That's that, that's going to be an issue here. You know, I liked you bad guys a lot better when you were dumber. I can't shoot diagonally. Of course, I can't shoot diagonally either. Wait, that's meat. That's also meat, but that's meat that is still alive and is trying to kill me. That's a good strategy. I'm hoping that you two jolly follies can't climb fences. That would be extremely useful. Oh, hi, guys. Did 
did his bullet just disappear? I mean, not, not that I'm complaining. I mean, his bullet can disappear any time it likes. Especially when it's headed towards me. Oh, hello there, Molly Moo Cow. Whatever the male equivalent is. Uh, Boris Moo Bull. See, I'm not the only one who sometimes gets stuck in the floor. That's what I like, you know. Like, bugs that affect everybody equally. Or uh, them more than me, that is also a possibility. Oh well, apparently the music's broken. One day he went a walking along the railroad track. was a bomb, not a power-up at all. Okay, how far did I get shuttled back and in which direction? Okay, that's not too bad. wonder with these games like would I have been satisfied with a game like this if I had bought it you know within a couple of years of it coming out depending on the price like I like until I was 10 or something we when we got yeah we had a really old well first we had no computer and then we had a computer that was 10 years out of date so I mean I basically grew up with console games which are a significantly different beast. because they're similar to the arcade and console games I grew up with. Same kind of style. And they're simple. E easier to pick up and play. <laughs> sideways. Good for you. You can jump up, you can jump over some hazards, but I'm 
leery of doing that, since others, like the cattle, you can't. <laughs> You'll, you're never sure how much you'll get sent back or which bad guys will respawn if you die. And the power up sure as heck don't respawn. Made no bones about that. I just shot was the one who killed me last time, so he won't be back. Where, uh, did, where did he come from? I literally... I feel like I missed something. <laughs> They give you one second of invincibility after you respawn. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't have done especially well in the like Wild West. I probably wouldn't have been a doctor or something. Yeah, medical knowledge was a little more limited that back then. <laughs> Probably some strategy about you know when to do an attack with <clears throat> like shooting multiple bullets, but I'm just so worried about running out of ammo. <laughs> the tendency I always have like must conserve ammunition at all costs. <laughs> hmm. I can carry 600 bullets. Okay. Must make sure I finish every level with 600 bullets, because I wouldn't want to run out. Yeah, 
could conceivably beat this episode. Hmm. And I was afraid for a second, I'm like, shoot, did I jinx it? <laughs> Cooler 831. Hi, I am back. What are you playing? Hey, Cooler. Thanks for coming by. I'm, I'm playing Billy the Kid Returns. It's a old uh, DOS game with eh, kind of janky controls and uh, yeah, not always fair difficulty or consistency, but it's kind of fun. There's a lot of classic American tunes for the music. <laughs> and a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> but, uh, how, how are you doing today, Cooler? I think that was a Gila monster I just killed, but I'm not really sure. Oh, the goober peas. That's what. That's what the tune is. Cooler eight thirty one. Good and you. I'm doing pretty well, thanks. I, you know, got a fair amount of work done today, and you know, I'm glad I'm gotten to stream something that's well, sometimes frustrating, but not you know a huge time commitment and. They try to balance you know, longer games and shorter games, but today's been pretty good, thanks. It's always good when you manage to get a fair amount done. Cooler831. What do you play on? Um, basically I just play on computer, like even when I'm, so far even when I'm emulating or, you know, playing Sega Genesis games, I just use a computer because that's the easiest thing to figure out. Like this was, it's a DOS game, so it was released on computer anyway, and I'm just, I'm just playing it in DOS box, which is nice and easy. It works surprisingly well for oh, for a lot of games. <laughs> Can't get over how like amazingly useful DOS Box is. Hey, do you play any of these older games, Cooler? <laughs> die this time I'll just keep going through like take one shot at each episode <laughs> just to show you guys the different settings <laughs> hmm. to continue our plot after uh, avoiding sombrero Jack Cooler and his gang <laughs> No, I play Warzone multiplayer, but I play some Pac-Man if that counts. Oh yeah, Pac-Man is definitely retro. <laughs> and a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, I like, I do like those old Golden Age arcade games, but Pac-Man's Pac cool. <laughs> That's when this had so many incarnations and like freeware versions of it. 
staggering. <laughs> see it um, playing out is after and perhaps while fighting Sombrero Jack to keep the old man's treasure, Billy the Kid received intelligence that Captain Lightfoot, who blew the bugle every time Billy the Kid completed a level, had hidden a treasure somewhere in Mexico. In an underground cavern full of Gila monsters and bats and what appeared to be giant uh, spiky turning logs. So naturally, Billy the Kid decided to challenge the cavalry officer for his treasure. Because eventually, Billy the Kid was going to return. Uh, where to? Uh, the plot didn't really go that deep. I think it would be fun to try out some of the more modern multiplayer games um, on stream. I just don't think I'd be very good at them. Cooler 831. What games do you play? Mm, I mostly play retro games. And. I have some more modern games that, I mean, sometimes it just depends on, you know, what's on, what's on the Steam sale at a reasonable price. I mean, I like adventures, I like, and I probably tend to play more action than in, like, pure adventure. But, in some modern FPS games, or semi-modern, like, to think of recent ones I've played. I played Far Cry and I liked that a lot. And then I tried Far Cry 2 and it was so different I didn't enjoy it as much. <laughs> I was recently playing one called Zombie Sniper that I got in the Halloween Twitch sale. Where it's basically you're a sniper during World War II and then everyone turns into zombies so you gotta kill them. At least the sniper games, you can zoom in enough that you get a pretty good view of the action. Mm. Yes, also I play retro, more retro um, and more adventure games on Twitch because I think it may give me a better chance to interact with chat. And like this, I'm just playing it in a window and I can, you know, alt-tab back to chat as needed. I... <laughs> Which will be more useful if at some point I try, like, not using text-to-speech software and just yeah, switching over to read chat. this because you know, we studied the sixth grade and uh, the Civil War in sixth grade I got into some of the music mm. oh, and there's Captain Lightfoot himself <laughs> the battle the 
general hears a row. He says the Yanks are coming, I can hear their rifles now. He turns around and wanders, what do you think he sees? The Georgia State Militia, eating Hoover peas. Peas, 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 eating Hoover peas. Wait, did I just... Am I back near the start of the level? Yeah, I think so. Uh, cooler. I don't. I don't think I asked. Like you said. I know you're playing uh, Warzone and other stuff. Do you stream? I... <sighs> okay, what am I even supposed to do there? <laughs> I... <laughs> At least those heavy bats just kind of skim around the ground and don't fly back up. monster or scorpion. It's dead's what it is. <laughs> That's how I like my venomous critters. Dead. So they can't kill me. <laughs> and, okay, okay, heck that level. I have to light for keep his treasure. I'm, I'm rich enough. <laughs> <clears throat> After fleeing from the, the captain's uh, underground cavern, Billy the Kid discovered that he had paid the local Native Americans to kill anyone who robbed him. And naturally, they were going to kill Billy. survived that. I do not know how. I think the cow is still wagging his tail at me. seeing half the bad guys. <laughs>
Ooh. Just... What was that? Was that like a roasted jackalope? Tell me, that is not a freaking jackalope. I swear. It's jackalope. They do exist. This game proves it. but this uh, level's terrain, it's hard to distinguish. And also the Apache are hiding in bushes, a little less obvious than the old face on the barrel routine. just got, you know, stuck on the wall. Yeah, let's try to replicate it. That's a good idea. <laughs> Jackalopes taste more like rabbit or more like antelope. These are the questions nobody asks. Hmm. 
I thought these guys were supposed to fight with bow and arrows, but no, they just like straight up shoot you with a gun, like everybody else. I'm expecting the next episode the cows are going to be packing heat too. <laughs> kind of like Wild West Cowboys and Moo Mesa. <laughs> just slowed down so he could try and shoot me.
that's what I get for messing around. Hmm. Am I going to try all the episodes? I don't know. Hmm. Deadly Senoritas. Yes, this is one of the catchiest songs ever written. And no, I am not going to try and sing it. Crap. Oh man. This deadly senior is gonna go like any which way. <laughs> this is bad. This was also what the wolf whistled in some of those old uh, theatrical droopy cartoons. Thank goodness they only take one hit. <laughs> start making up a song or this tune about like uh, putting condiments on hot dogs something nice and inoffensive it wasn't so much that I started intentionally making it up as my brain started doing things without my permission <clears throat> and I was like can I concentrate on something productive and my brain's like no you need to make up more lyrics that fit this tune. Yeah. It'd be nice if we could control our brains. Should have been dead at that point. Ah. That lady just ate my health. People rude. If you can kind of get them like in a bottleneck or up against a wall and then shoot with, like such a time where they can't, can't get out of the way fast enough. Or get them to shoot and miss and then shoot them.
You weren't here the last time I passed by. Oh, but that was in another lifetime. accidentally hit shift and that's what saved me. <laughs> This is one of those games it would be a fun challenge to try and come up with a coherent plot for it that encompassed everything. <laughs> oh, also, interestingly, I don't think I mentioned this, it's still being sold. Like, the original developer has a website and they sell this and several other of their, of their, of their early 90s DOS games as a bundle. Not on Steam, though. It also got picked up and sold as, like, in a box. Um, back in the 90s by one of those companies like BNN or MVP, which is the copy I have. <clears throat> on floppy disk in a drawer somewhere. And I know I already killed everyone here, but I don't trust this game to play fair. E.G. Exhibit A. Upper right corner.
And it's back to one. Hi. <laughs> That's what I get for hurrying. Top guns. I wonder if Tom Cruise's name was on that list. Okay, well, there are three more episodes. I'll give each one a go and then call it a night. Nobody can say I didn't put in an effort. Ooh, ghost town. That means, like, a town that's been deserted. It doesn't mean it's actually full of undead spirits or anything. That, that would be crazy, right, guys? Right? <laughs> or what, but I'm not going to try not to touch them. I'm trying to touch anything I don't have to. Now that thing looks dangerous. <clears throat> yeah, the Yellow Rose of Texas. Which, according to my high school English teacher, you can sing any Emily Dickinson poem to the tune of. That's a less nice way of saying she invariably wrote in ballad form. like spontaneously appear from the wall. Hmm. Hedgehog flambe on the left side of the screen there. Mm. Or, you know, the smoking the hog's head, but uh, hedgehog flambe sounds more exotic. Far enough away from the ghosts if you can lose them. Chance would be a fine thing. Come on, Mr. Dead Gunman, let's. Hmm, <laughs> not playing as cautiously as I ought. Perhaps because I'm getting tired. some of the ghosts.
Hmm. Yellow Rose of Texas, more like the Yellow Rose of Death. Infantry to take him, they did try. Mm. <laughs> huh. Wait, is this guitar cat? Whoa, sorry, distracted by TikTok. Hey. No, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm still plugging away, but uh, I'm kind of thinking at this point I'll just try. Yeah, you know, I'm trying each episode once, and then I'm probably gonna call it a night rather than make sure I beat the whole game. There's some interesting turns. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, Native Americans, Gila monsters, more like women. Uh, gun-toting skeletons and uh, ghosts that follow you around. And now cavalry officers that seem to be colored the same as the ground so that you can't see them. I didn't think the U.S. Army employed camouflage that early. That's a lot of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of knew what I was in for after we got to the point of the, like, steampunk mice. <laughs> eh, it keeps the game interesting. So this tune was the, um, this is the tune that was the music for the level two in the older version of the game. It's a different, you know, a better sounding, like, different arrangement, but I still don't know what song it is. Or I, th I think it is. Yeah, here it is. As far as, like, got a very vague resemblance to Polly Wally Doodle. Mm, vaguer than I remember. Guitar Cat. The officers are blue on the green grass, so that's a fun color blindness issue. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense they would be blue. <laughs> The same color uniforms after as a, after the Civil War. Yeah, blue and green are two of those colors that huh, often do look similar, huh? at least in their default state. I know blue is one of those freaky colors where sometimes it's as light as yellow, sometimes it's so dark even people with like normal vision consider it black. Like, what what exactly is blue's deal here? Supposed to be more aggressive at shooting these <laughs> cavalry officers. Cat. This goes to show you. Oh, it's back. Oh, cool. Did it flicker out for a minute? Actually, I haven't seemed to have as many connection problems tonight. I thought maybe the internet finally resolved itself. But yeah, for all my talk about being aggressive when I confront the U.S. Cavalry, it's not always the best strategy. 
Unless you're like Guitar a cat. tank. Yeah, connection timed out. Mm. I do like how OVS has that option where it'll try and automatically reconnect. <laughs> Uh, Garrett arrest. Pat Garrett was the sheriff who, like, captured Billy the Kid in real life. I think, like, at first another sheriff was dispatched to try and uh, capture him, but both the sh sheriff and his deputy were killed. <laughs> very tall. Hey, it's Lady Dimitrescu's husband. Yeah, he was a cavalry officer. Got shot by Billy the Kid and killed. And by killed, I mean he dropped his gun and held his hand up. And his wife decided to become a vampire so they could be immortal together. But her husband didn't, because he hadn't actually been killed. Yeah. I have no idea where I was going with this. <laughs> Except to say that that, that enemy was more than usually tall. Hi. Guitar Cat. I was gonna guess that she'd refer to him as father of my daughters. Father of my daughters. <laughs> I feel like that's a reference to something. What's that a reference to? Well, at least he has a human decency not to respawn. Specific, just not giving their personal relationship any work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Tall man does not give up. <laughs> And he doesn't exist. Will that help? Yes. I, ah. I love the music for this. It's a arrangement of the old Irish song Ross and the Bow. back in high school and I was supposed to sing this song at one point. I fumbled my headphones and now have another bruise above my left eye. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dangerous things, headphones.
Kitar Cat. Oh man, Spoon River Anthology is so good. It is. It's amazing. Like, so many great characters. I shouldn't reread that. I've got a copy somewhere. I don't think. Well, I don't think we did all of them. Kitar Cat. Hmm. I gave a copy to Brennan, LMU roommate. Oh, nice. It's a good present. It's one of those things you can reread over and over. They're all really good books of poetry. And. Yeah. I feel like the tune for this uh, Ros and the Bow was also like used for or extremely similar to some other folk song, but I'm not placing it. Guitar cat. And only like ten dollars, which was nothing when I had a job. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty reasonable price. <laughs> I think I they just gave us Xeroxes. It was just like a production within drama class in high school, but I got a copy from like a nice hardcover copy from some book sale. And I still have somewhere. Yeah, this is kind of a different arrangement of the song than you usually hear, and not just because it's faster, like, I think some of the notes are different. Oh wow, well, I made it to the point where the music loops without dying. Hi. <laughs> Guitar Cat. I think we had the whole text in our brick of a U.S. lit textbook. Nice. That's Guitar good. Cat. AI. <laughs> yeah, the AI is entirely... Yeah. I wouldn't say brilliant, but good enough to be frustrating sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that must have been a giant textbook. Guitar cat. I was trying to say I. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of these games memorization helps. I... Running out of or not running out of ammo also helps. In an ideal world. This is why we need laser guns. They don't run out of bullets. Okay. Okay. So the ones with darker colored coats take two hits. I'm sure I'll remember to look for that in the heat of the battle as they're jumping ten feet in the sky and I'm trying to avoid them. But they do run out of power. Sad face. Yeah, they do. Hopefully not as quick as guns run out of bullets, but yeah, it's like our, our scientists should get get working on that. You know, we we have a good military budget in this country. I am told, but it's good. Yeah, long-lasting laser guns. Why not? And damn, even the inmates have it on out for me. You say good like it's not a money sink that could go to education. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, ideally these funds would go to something useful like education, but it's already being, you know, spent on weaponry. Might as well make it cool sci-fi weaponry. Just about to say, oh, I can actually make it out of this, and I run into a bomb. Okay, I'll actually try that one again. Because if you beat the last episode, 
You still see the ending screen, even if you didn't beat all the other nine. And if I can't get this, I'll probably call Key it a night. <laughs> I have opinions. L D Y D R G L D Y D R G N B W E E. L D Y D. Oh, it's a <laughs> emote. Guitar cat. <laughs> wow. Cooler831. I am back. Hey, Cooler. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Cooler831. What's up? Not a Guitar lot. Cat. <laughs> Lady Dragon Slayer without vowels. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot of words are harder to recognize when you take out all the vowels. <laughs> But yeah, Cooler, I've like, had a go at pretty much all, all the episodes. Hey, at Cooler831. Cry hey. And this is the last episode in the game, so I'm gonna see if I can beat it. And if not, I'll call it a night. And then I'll try to sleep, but I'll be hearing Reuben and Rachel and Roz and the Bow and Year of Jubilo and everything else in my head for all night. <laughs> The cooler, I think I was going to ask you earlier. I, I don't think I've asked you before. Do you stream too? I know you were saying you played a war zone. Cooler 831. Hi, Kedar Cat. Cooler 831. No. I didn't think I would try streaming for a long time. Guitar cat. <laughs> oh. I... <sighs> Cooler831. I don't stream. I... <laughs> Sometimes it's more fun to just play games <laughs> without streaming. <laughs> I guess it, de it depends partly on my mood and the game. <laughs> I'll try, I try and pick games for streaming that other people will find interesting and also they don't have to get too close to the screen for. <laughs> oh shoot, he saw me. I... <clears throat> See, I didn't wish they didn't warp you all the way back to the beginning of the segment each time. It's not even that hard to get where you back to where you were. It's just <clears throat> annoying more than anything. Guitar Cat. Any game I start on stream, I feel like I have to only play on stream. It's a holdover from being the youngest brother. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like... Guitar Cat. Which is why I mainly do one-shots. Mmm. I can understand that. Like, if I start a game on stream, even if not that many people see me play it, I kind of feel like... Well, shoot, I owe it to the viewers to finish the game. <laughs> I don't know, maybe if it's like really not a good game and a fairly long one then I wouldn't come back to it another day. <clears throat> it's like a giant pear. <laughs> Guitar Cat. I just remember feeling so bad when I missed watching my brother play his games. Mm. Is it like you wouldn't necessarily know what was Cooler going 831. on? <laughs> I want to, but I play on Xbox, and I don't want to spend like 100 or 20. Mm. And yeah, because like uh, capture cards can be expensive, and I know there's not really a good way to 
Cooler 831. 200. Mm. Guitar Cat. Oh man, yeah, that's a mood. Yeah, it's frustrating there's not an easier, like, cheap way to play or to stream the console games. Yeah, pretty much Guitar all of them. Cat. I'm just glad I'm already an audio guy, so I already bought the mics I need to stream. Yeah, that is good. I mean, I've, you know, I try and do voice work some, so I'm glad I have this blue Yeti. Which is pretty good. I mean, you know, good enough for stream. Nope. I also realized, like, thinking about USB mics, I realize my computer only has three normal USB ports. So it's like if I have one for my mouse and one for my mic and one for my better, like, camera, and I can't plug in a CD-ROM drive or something. And I probably have to get one of those USB splitters. Cat. I'm working with the snowball because I haven't set up the mm. actual mice mics. Nice, yeah, I know. I've known other streamers use snowballs. I mean, that's probably if I didn't have the Blue Yeti, like, it's a long-term loan from, like, a guy I'm doing riding with. That's probably a snowball is what I would use. I also feel like when you're streaming, if it sounds pretty good, people aren't going to be as, like, super concerned about High quality audio. You know. Cooler 831. At Keytar Cat, what do you play on? Keytar Cat. Yeah, the snowball is about $35 normally. Right, where's the Keytar Cat? Blue Yeti is 100. I play on PC. Cooler 831. Oh. <sighs> 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 Guitar Cat. Well, stream on PC. I have a Switch and some old handheld consoles. Nice. I have actually seen some people... Oof. I killed him last time. I have seen some people like streaming from handheld consoles. Like some of the PlayStation ones, which I don't know how difficult it is. I think you know, original hardware is cooler and I like to have the original game whenever I can, but uh, like streaming on original hardware seems like it takes a lot more trouble. Some of a gun totally went off screen. That's it's not even playing fair. <sighs> mm. <sighs> <sighs> Alright, I think I'll give it one more shot and then I'll call it a night. <sighs> <clears throat> Cooler 831. How old are you, if you don't mind? Me? Guitar Cat. I haven't touched that, because I don't have issue using emulators when they make old games so hard to get. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not gonna, yeah, pay $100 for a copy of this cartridge. Um, no, I would rather buy a, a month's worth of groceries. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, uh, I'm 34, Cooler. <laughs> I finished grad school a couple of years ago. <laughs> So I grew up, like, my first console was the Sega Genesis, which I still have. Guitar Cat. And I'm mid-twenties. I know I'm old, older than, I think, most of the streamers. Most of them seem to be in the, you know, 
20 to 30 range. Yeah, how about you, Cooler? <laughs> See, you're just for decoration. Oh, you guys are older than me, but I am 18. Oh, cool. And when you said you play Xbox, do you mean like a 360 or one? All right, one. I'm starting to lose track of my Xbox generations. At least the PlayStation's of a simple numbering system. Cat. Oh man, I still think of Xbox 360 as just last gen backslash. I know what you mean. It's too easy to like lose track of what's current. And then more and more things are like, oh yeah, that was just a little Cooler while ago. I have a ones hashtag. Ah, oh, nice. Never gotten a, like actually owned a system beyond PS2, just because eh, I guess I was more into computer games. They're cheap, easy to get. <laughs> <coughs> oh, you! I was thinking of getting a PS. Uh, I think of getting a PS5 when they had that rumor that it would be backwards compatible through the PS1, but unfortunately it was just a rumor. <laughs> now, I had a thought about the PS5, which is Cooler 831. But I do have a PS3. Ah, oh, cool. It seemed like a good console. Mm. Yeah, there's one of those guys on the roof. I have the thought of the PS5, which is... <clears throat> if they... If they could just make it backwards compatible with the PS4, but then they could sell an add-on that's like essentially the disk drive from a first generation PS3, which was compatible all the way through the PS1. I mean, you know, even if they sold the like drive that you could plug into your PS5 for a hundred dollars or something, you'd technically get it. Yeah, you know, a console that was backwards compatible through Guitar PS1. <laughs> if I were employed, I might get a PS4 or Xbox One, but I'm a broke autistic college student with no ambition. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a mostly broke college graduate with, um... Ambition, but not cash. Oh, 
college lifestyle. Hard to have much money coming in when you're paying lots of money out and doing lots of Guitar work. Cash. <laughs> cash is liquidated ambition. <laughs> I like that. Liquidated ambition. slip on by and find more later. Cooler 831. I want the new Xbox because so I can play the old games. You can play. Like which like which generation of older games will you be able to play on the new Xbox? The Xbox One Series X or whatever it's called. Huh? Manga scrum person can certainly jump. <laughs> All the ones from Xbox. Wait, really? It's like original Xbox games will be, like, you can play them on the new system? Dig a great hole in the meadow, and in it put Roz in the bow. Or in this case, Billy the Kid. Guitar Cat. Oh shit, nice. Yeah, I hadn't realized that. I might. And that kind of makes me want to get one, because there were a few Xbox games, I orig original Xbox games I always wanted to play. Guitar but... Cat. Also not so nice for the game over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I know, for example, the Xbox was the only system they released the all the silent scope games on with an actual like sniper rifle peripheral and i thought that would be a really cool way to play them <laughs> as most of the ports it was just hey yeah, you use your controller <laughs> which it is fun but not quite as fun as looking down the actual scope yeah, <clears throat> yeah it is after midnight <laughs> I was tempted to try again, but nah, I think I should probably call it a night at this point. But, um, I'll be back on this weekend. Um. Guitar Cat. I never played any of the Xbox exclusives because the ethos of Xbox was too violent for my parents. Mmm. Interesting, as opposed to some of the other consoles. Well, it's kind of like I I don't I didn't remember that, but it's kind of like how in the Cooler 90s, you know. Are you getting off? Yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a night. Um, Guitar cat. Probably raid someone. PlayStation just got a little racy. <laughs> it's like how Nintendo used to be the family-friendly one, and you know, Sega was the ed edgy one that would with the use of cheat codes, put actual blood in its ports of actually bloody arcade games. 
Nintendo was condemning them, and they're like, that is inhumane and horrible, and we will never do that, and wait, you can make money like that? Ooh, maybe Doom could appear on the Nintendo 64. We have that technology. Mm. Yeah. Reputation matters until there's eh, millions of dollars at stake. I always give Nintendo a hard time about that. They never really listen to me. But, um, I appreciate you guys coming in tonight. Well, probably, I mean, normally go back to streaming on Wednesdays and Sundays and try to make Saturdays a thing, like, specifically maybe short horror Saturdays where I play, you know, just one or two hour stream playing some horror game. And and this Sunday I'm planning to play something special for Valentine's Day. Uh, the first real dating sim I've ever played. And then next week I'll Cooler start something. Okay, by later waving hand, waving hand, waving hand. <laughs> Bye, Cooler, and I really appreciate you coming in. <laughs> oh, dating sim. Yeah. And then next week, or next Wednesday, I may start playing Sam and Max Hit the Road, which is a one of the funniest mm -hmm. adventure games ever made, and I have a copy of, and I've been wanting to play for years. And, um, if you guys could stick around just long enough and we can raid somebody, I'd appreciate it. Oh. See who's online. <clears throat> um. All right, I keep saying I'm gonna like raid somebody new. Maybe I should do that tonight. Like, just type in retro and find some small streamer to raid. Way to meet people. Cooler eight thirty. Also anxiety producing. Hey guys, seems good resident sleeper. Showing me. Oh, okay. Okay, now the list is updated. Um. Oh, that girl Joey's online. I don't think I've raided her before. We should raid her. She's a cool streamer. She does a lot of uh, adventure games, especially horror ones, and also retro games in general. I think her her fav her go to system is the Commodore sixty four, which. she playing tonight? Oh, I think she's still playing American McGee's Alice. Which seems like a really good game. I still remember the print ads in the magazines for that. I face my darkest chapter. The queen has taught you well. My knife will slice your heart in half and send you straight to hell. Yeah, they made it pretty clear it was going to get an M rating when they put the print ads out. <laughs> um... Let's go ahead and raid. Hmm. Ah, it is working. But yeah, um, to wrap up, thank you, um, Kitar Cat and Cooler and everyone else who came through. I am Furblind Gamer, and I hope you all enjoyed this, the Billy the Kid Returns. And also, I'll see you all this weekend. And thanks for sticking around for the raid, and I hope that everybody has a good night. <laughs>